Hey guys, it's the Techie TVI here. Um, today I am doing a review tutorial on the Splash Top application, or I guess you'd call it a system since it encompasses multiple things. Um, but I had someone reach out to me and say that their students were going to be some of the teachers were going to be using this with students and asked if I had a tutorial on it and I told them that I would record one for them so if you have students that use it or you would benefit from this or you've heard about it and wanted to see what it was all about here we go and I hope you enjoy it it's just a simple overview um what I could do with it um since I don't have a class. I used my iPad and my iPhone along with my computer and um, was able to look at it from different perspectives that way. But I was able to have my iPad as the teacher iPad and the student device as my iPhone. So I'll talk about some of that as we look at those different settings that I'm using it with. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So at the top of the computer, there looks, there's a little icon. I don't even know how to explain what that looks like. But when you click on it, it opens a ses session manager. And you do have to allow, which you'll see here, um, allow it to control your device. So I just enable that. Um, and then when you open the ses session manager, you, um, will see the, that the login information, the settings that you can change a few different things on, which this is really going to be more for the teacher to control. Um, sorry if that got really loud. Uh, so... It's just different options like the the people who are logged on to the session can print the print from your computer basically. Um, I'm trying to see because the way that I'm having to do this right now. The oh there we go, now I can see. Um, the way that I was looking at it while I was doing this voiceover. Um, it was really small, but I've got it enlarged now. Um, again, this is just different settings. Advanced settings is basically IP addresses and things like that. But if you are using it with a student, um, you're going to know what you want to do with it. Um, so I'm just sharing a session. And when you click... Oh, this is when you want to stop sharing and you get a new session code so that you can control who's accessing it change the quality and then you when you click start sharing um is when it pops up this qr code which the student devices can scan they can also um enter the numeric code for the session it just depends on how that teacher wants to do it. Um, if they want to put the QR code up on the smart board and students scan it from their seat. Um, what I want to show you next is what it looks like for the student device to log on and get started. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is the student device. And what I'm going to do is pull up the app and... There's a icon there to scan, and then I just aim it at the QR code. And you'll see it connecting, and then it pulls up my desktop. And that's what it looks like in portrait mode, which is straight up and down. So I turn it to landscape so you can actually see. But you saw my desktop previously, so this is what it's going to 
look like. Okay, so <clears throat> this is still on my iPhone, but I flipped the this the scene or the video. Here it'll ask to allow the microphone um to record video um and access photos to save anything that the student would record over. So I want to show you what happens if the teacher gives the student control. So they'll con um, be able to control it from their device. Here I pulled up the keyboard um, and by their gesturing they can control the mouse on the computer. So here I'm just moving the mouse with my finger on the iPhone and you can see at the bottom on the bottom right there's an option for the keyboard and the left and right click of a mouse or you can tap and double tap that's how I did it during this um you can see I used the keyboard to type in Google and I'm doing this just if a, they bleh, sorry if the student has a presentation to give the class they could, um, the teacher could give them control and then they can navigate to their, um, presentation on Google Slides or Microsoft or what, however they do that, whatever online platform that teacher is using and pull it up or create it. Um, but normally you can put the keyboard down. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. But you can see there that I am uh, moving the mouse with the with my finger. So here I'm going to show you what it looks like from the student perspective. You can see I'm using the marker tool to circle the the code. Um, I am going to show you this from the teacher iPad perspective. But first, I want to show you what it looks like to have the text up there. And I show you what the marker and the laser tool and the highlighter look like from the student perspective. And they can change the thickness and the color of the marker and the highlighter. Um, but I want you to see what our student is going to see. So the teacher would have their computer logged on. And then a, a teacher iPad to do the, the annotating. Here you're going to see the marker and then the highlighter just in a circle on the screen. Um, I'm just showing you that. There's the eraser. You can, e you can choose to um, actually erase or you can just select erase all. Again, I'm going to show you that. This is the laser pointer. So if the teacher wants to bring specific information um, or to show specific information or draw the student's attention to specific information, just like an old-timey laser pointer, that's what this does, um, which can be helpful. They can add shapes and various different things to the screen for the students to see. And the student, when they have control, they can do that also. This is... Um, a blackout screen so if they want to hide certain information from the student during a presentation they can do that and again here's a spotlight so to show specific information they can do that as well and again this would be something for the teachers to do but if you wanted to use it with your student it could be helpful to show them um, how to do something on a computer and they could have their iPad or phone and zoom in because I do show you that you can zoom from the student device and <clears throat> from the teacher device so if they want to be in control they are able to zoom also they it just adds in some gestures that they have to do with two or three fingers to move around. Here I'm showing you the teacher has pulled up a blank paper so this is where they could annotate on their iPad um, 
if they were doing a math problem. And like I said, the student can zoom in with this or on this screen. Um, and you can see there, there are different types of paper. So this is a grid paper. And on the teacher side, they do have to zoom in because it only gives that portion of the paper. I don't know if it was an error with my iPad or not, but on each of the lines, that's what I got. Um, but they do have a KWL chart and things like that. There, I've zoomed in and drawn a line on the grid um, so that you could see what the student would see. Here, what I'm doing is I've navigated to a website. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'll show you that I'm scrolling on the iPad. And then what I'm going to do is zoom in th with the teacher iPad. And you can see there I'm right clicking. So you have full functionality of the... Uh, computer when you're a host or controlling apparently I wanted to show you um, the functionality of the computer so if a student wants to save an image on the computer they can right click and save an image um, if they're in control of the device and of course they can take a screenshot if they need to reference something later okay so I'm going to show you the zooming on the teacher iPad. So I've logged in on the iPad as a teacher. And here's the gestures. One tap for a click. Uh, tap and hold right click. Switch display is three fingers swiping. Scrolling the screen is three fingers up and down. Dragging is two fingers up and down. And a two finger tap is configure bring the settings this is the toolbar it explains what all the icons are on the toolbar um i didn't have multiple displays so if that comes up you could probably ask the teacher since if they're using multiple displays they know what it does um i just did not have access to try that for you guys and I am sorry about that. I'm sorry that this tutorial is a little discombobulated. I was recording on three different devices. And here you can see that I'm changing the different options. At the bottom right of the screen, um, there is a pen with a mark. And that will get you the options at the top of the screen um here i am typing on the keyboard but you have the option to see the files which is at the top left um the first I well it's the second icon from the left but the first one is to hide that toolbar then you have the option to screen capture and I'm telling you this as I'm show, re-showing you from the teacher's per perspective how to annotate on the desktop it, with the highlighter and the eraser and all that stuff. I'm not going to re-explain it to you because I don't want to insult your intelligence. Um, the fourth icon looks like a picture. And... I can't remember what it does, but I do go over it. Record is recording the screen you can record and uh, have voiceover for it. Like what I'm doing now, except I couldn't do the voiceover as I was doing it because I was doing it for multiple devices. So here you can see I've put up the blackout screen. And moving it around um the next icons are the annotation icons you have the pencil or the marker the highlighter 
the eraser and I showed you the erase all option it pops up when you're there and then you have a shut or I'm sorry after the highlighter is a shape then the text then the eraser then you have the pointer the back and forward arrow to undo and redo the page I could not figure out what that actually did it is the fourth from the right okay here's the gallery and snapshots so this explains what each folder does um because this was my first time using it as a from the teacher perspective it does show me the what those things do and i left that in there you're welcome to go back and pause it so you can read it um and here is where whenever you put files in that folder i showed you on the desktop that's where they go that's where they end up here i've captured a snapshot and you see it says folder on your desktop does not save it to the device these are the flip charts backgrounds um that's just basically backgrounds for the flip charts and it goes in that folder um the third from the right icon is the blackout screen and then you have settings and closing here i'm showing you the different kinds of paper again I'm zoom here you can see that i'm actually zooming so whenever i was thought i was going to show it to you before apparently i didn't but this is zooming from the teacher perspective um so if they need to zoom in to write or to draw or to annotate on the desktop they can do that here you can see i can the the teacher if you were using it for yourself um you can change the controls if you need to there you also saw me um zooming in um on the desktop so that doesn't change what's happening on the actual computer it's just on that device and the student does not see the zooming in that i'm doing and this is again from the teacher perspective i'm just navigating on the internet so what i'm doing here is going to look a little crazy i am controlling as the student and the teacher and i'm navigating to different places on the internet with each so here i've went to my techie tvi control site and what i'm going to try to do here is um change the controls and then see if i can switch the view so if the teacher wanted to switch what they were seeing they could switch the the view of the monitor and it didn't work so that's why i told you i don't know what that functionality would entail so here you can see the trackpad settings and this is the toolbar at the bottom um you can disconnect switch the device and the way that you get to that toolbar is at the bottom of your screen there is it's a little bar with an arrow above it and you can cl click it brings up the mouse um, buttons or you can um, change the trackpad settings to where you want the the button clicks to be or you can just bring them up on the screen here is where before when I told you I was going to zoom in I didn't when because I zoomed in on the teacher device it didn't show it so here I am zooming in as the person that's controlling it um so that's why there was a little disconnect on what I thought was going on with the student device because they can't see everything that the teacher's doing so the, if you recall on the student device I could not see this toolbar at all and this is I'm, i just played around with it <laughs> so um because i was learning this as i was doing the tutorial i just wanted to know what some of the functionalities of it was i want to know if i could zoom in i did not test its functionality with voiceover 
because this is such a visual thing, this would be more geared toward our students with low vision. Um, but you can see if the student was presenting in the class, they could zoom in to have the text at whatever size they needed um, and continue their presentation and it doesn't change what their peers would see. And here I'm moving the device around with my gestures. And I believe I had to use three touch and hold. Yes, touch and hold with three fingers to move around. Just like with Zoom on the iPad. And what you just saw there was the settings under the annotate toolbar for the gestures. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm testing to see... The teacher can make notes um, and multitask. I did not test this with the student device, but the teacher can make notes as they are. They can do, use the multitask feature on the iPad if they need to. That's what I'm trying to say. Another feature that I wanted to show you real quick is the arrow keys. You can pop those up so they are on the screen. Of course, it is a visual thing, so and there's no tactile feedback. It just moves the screen as they need it. And this is on the teacher device, and is, if you can recall in the student view, you do not see those arrow keys. And you can see at the bottom, you can rotate, um, lock the rotation so the view doesn't change. So if they need it in landscape, you can they can lock that, and it doesn't switch back and forth. And you can change the view on the iPad. And these are just the different settings on the iPad that you can do. You can change the way, the resolution, the auto lock feature, background mode, and Windows touch gestures when it's connected to a Windows PC. So that that's might be something that's helpful if your student uses that uses a Windows device. You can turn the trackpad on and off and use the iPad like a trackpad. Um, but here you see the different uh, resolutions that you can change. Um, that's all I have for the splash top tutorial. I'm sorry I said um like 8 million times. And I just wanted to give you an overview on what you can do with it. Um, like I said, ugh. I've got to stop saying, um, the person that asked me for the tutorial just said that her students were going to be using it, and I just wanted to show her and anybody else that might have that this come up, what you can do with it, what some of the features are, um, if there's something, I said, um, again. If there's something else that I need to show you or that you want to see, I'll be more than glad to redo this or go more in depth on it. Um, whatever you guys need. I hope the tutorial was helpful. I hope that it met your expectations. And I am going to do another one on another... <clears throat> similar application soon hopefully next week anyway i hope you enjoy the tutorial i hope you're having a good night or a good day whatever it is wherever you are and i will see you at the next tutorial